Television and movies have such power to change the way people think. So if people only see somebody with a disability in a pathetic role or in a, as an angry person, that perpetuates the myth that if you're disabled, uh, you're a lesser person. And I just, I don't buy that and I, I work hard to, to try to put the, you know, the end to that. My mother had severe depression issues. I think when I was younger, I didn't understand it the way I like to think I do now. She's what I guess they used to call uh, bipolar. And my mom would be extremely happy and loving one day and like fierce and angry the next. I feel very badly that the help that's available now wasn't available, you know, to to people in the 50s and maybe early 60s. It, this stuff wasn't as understood as it is today. And, and there's still, you know, it's still an imprecise science, but it's very important to seek out help and to not look at yourself as somebody different and weird, but as, as a human being who's capable of doing something to make their life a little fuller. I play Dr. Albert Robbins on CSI Crime Scene Investigation. My character is a slightly left of center chief forensic pathologist for the Clark County, Las Vegas, and I've been with the show since the first season. Cut. 31. Hey, one more time, please. I knew at an early age that I wanted to be involved in entertainment, show business, movies, television, music. I wasn't sure where it was, but I knew I wanted to be in there. I was working in the morning from 4.30 to 9 at a radio station in Orange County, California, as a disc jockey. On July 10th, 1978, right after my radio job, I got on the freeway, a guy driving an 18-wheel truck. The guy was drunk, and he lost control of this giant truck, and he ran me over, and I was trapped under tons of metal. And then I started feeling heat. My uh, gas tank was starting to erupt, and I heard a cop saying, forget about him, forget about him. I, I just started screaming for my life, and just at that moment, two, two fellows, a 39-year-old truck driver named John and a 65-year-old welder named Tommy York came to my rescue, and the truck driver had a giant fire extinguisher on his back of his truck, and they jammed that fire extinguisher in and managed to put out the fire where they thought my voice was coming from. At that time, the paramedics had rolled up and the fire engines and they used the the jaws of life and pulled the the truck off what was left of my car and i remember seeing the the metal disappear and seeing beautiful blue light above me i was burned pretty badly while this was all going on and i was starting to go into shock when they pulled the truck off me and my last memory was of a guy who looked like John Lennon with with the uh, those you know those wire rim glasses that we hippies used to wear, and this guy had long hair and he looked at me and he said, "Nighty night," and I woke up two days later, and I was missing my right leg above my knee, and I was wrapped up like a mummy, and I had tubes sticking everywhere you can stick tubes, and I remember my my father was a. Uh, a lawyer and an engineer, but he was a decorated naval officer and a very tough guy. The image of my dad crying is not <laughs> not something that uh, that that was worse than getting run over by the truck. I went through 25 uh, skin graft things and a lot of amputations. I lost my left leg in stages: toes, foot, ankle, calf. And that was no fun. That, that happened over a period of six or seven months. But I started healing from the burn wounds. They did all the skin grafts. And I threw myself into my therapy the same way I threw myself into music or acting or anything else. It's quite possible to have a disability 
and go on and have a life. I think that's the, that's the object of this thing. Nobody would choose to be injured or disfigured. It's, let's get it straight, that's a rotten thing to happen to anybody. It happens. Bad stuff happens. And if it's, if it's you that it happens to, you have to feel what you're going through. There's, there is no way you can get around feeling the change that's, that's going to be there. Some people takes a week, some people it takes years. And I, and I don't pretend to be an expert on this, but I can tell you that it helps to try to help somebody else and it helps to have things that you're interested in. I never had the sensation that because I became a person with a disability that I became a lesser person. And that's been sort of the core of the work I've done over the last 30 years. And I'm also involved pretty heavily in the disability community. I serve as the chairman of the Screen Actors Guild, AFTRA and Actors' Equity uh, Performers with Disabilities Committee. And I'm on the board of the National Organization on Disability and a burn survivors group called the Phoenix Society. We started getting a voice in the 1980s. Some more enlightened casting people and producers said, okay, well, we can throw a robe on that guy or that woman and they'd be a decent judge. And I think I played every judge on television. I was on eight different shows and two different movies playing a judge. It's not an easy thing to change stereotypes, but if I help to move things a little bit in that direction, it's going to make things better for people. And it's not just about actors or entertainers. I want to see the, the little girl in the wheelchair assume from kindergarten on that she can be a lawyer or a college president or a mother or a stockbroker. You know, I want to see the kid who's deaf have absolute uh, dreams about a positive role. and. My accident actually helped clarify my dreams. You know, I, I had to suddenly think, what can I do? What's going to be a little bit harder to do? Where should I put the focus of my career? Hope is something that I try to have every day. And if you have it, nurture it and love it and listen to it. And if you don't have it, go talk to somebody about it. Let's see. Um... Remember, there was a little sapling right at parallel to the spot where I was run over. 32 years later, that I, I drive by it and I see the big tree, and I I like that tree. So many things. Things they don't teach you in school You learn them on your feet Out there in the streets So many things they don't teach you in school